Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll be solving this problem from NAITS and this problem you could say is based on the concept of collision. So it's a very nice problem. So do try it out for five minutes. So let's read the problem statement now. So we have a cylinder of mass m and radius r and it moves with a constant speed v through a region of space that contains dust particles of mass m, which is at rest. There are n number of particles per unit volume. The cylinder moves in a direction perpendicular to its axis and we have to assume that the mass of the sand particle is much less than the mass of the cylinder and assume the particles do not interact with each other. All the collisions take place is perfectly elastic and the surface of the cylinder is smooth. The drag force per unit length of the cylinder required to maintain the speed v constant for the cylinder when it has entered in the region. So we have to find the drag force which we have to apply on the cylinder so as to maintain its speed as constant once it has entered the region. So let's begin with the analysis of this problem. So first let's just draw a top view of the problem. Okay, let's first consider a sand particle that is coming at an angle of, that is approaching the cylinder at an angle of theta. Let's say this is the sand particle. Okay, it is at rest initially and this cylinder is moving towards the right with a velocity of v. So whenever problems like these are presented in front of you where like one particle mass is extremely large as compared to the other mass always go in the frame of the heavier mass like for example a ball colliding with a wall or a situation something like this always take the frame of reference as the heavier particle and i'll explain the reason for that so if we go in the frame of reference of the heavier particle the sand particle will approach the will have a velocity of v towards the left now if i extrapolate this line this angle will also be theta so the velocity with which the sand particle will approach the cylinder is going to be v cos theta. So this component of velocity is going to be v cos theta and the perpendicular component is going to be v sin theta. Now as the mass of the sand particle is much less as compared to the mass of the cylinder, this velo the velocity of this uh, cylinder is going to be exactly the same as before. So now as we are in the frame of reference of the cylinder, it will still approximately at rest its velocity will be so negligible that we can neglect it okay so this is the condition before collision and after collision what will happen is the v cos theta component will reverse its direction and the v sin theta component will be exactly the same as the collision is elastic right so approach velocity and uh, separation velocity must be same so now as you can see the magnitude of change in momentum of the sand particle is going to be 2 mv cos theta Let's say this is the line of approach of the cylinder. So at an angle theta, if, if we take a small element of angular width d theta, and if I try to extrapolate it, so if I draw this element from the top view, this would look something like this. Okay, so this would be the d theta element. And let's say this width is dx, this length is going to be r d theta, and there is a length of dl into the plane of this patch of volume so if we consider this volume the volume of that element is going to be r d theta which is the length multiplied by dx which is its width multiplied by dl which is into the plane if we want to uh, find the number of sand particles in this region it will be so number of sand particles in this dv volume is going to be n which is the number of sand particles per unit volume multiplied by dv which would be r d theta dx dl okay in the problem they have specifically mentioned they want the drag force per unit length so actually what we want is the number of sand particles in dv per unit length so the number of sand particles per unit length okay let's say it is dn so dn will come out to be it is going to be nr d theta dx so now let's just try to determine the force imparted on the sand particles that are present in this dv volume. So that force, let's just call it as df, would be equal to the rate of change of momentum, you could say. We determined the momentum of one sand particle earlier to be 2 mv cos theta. So let's just write it here. Multiplied by the number of sand particles in this dv volume per unit length. So that would be nr d theta dx as we determined up here. Okay, so now if I take all the time independent factors out, then this would simply become dx by dt. Now what is dx by dt? dx by dt is simply the velocity with which the sand particle is approaching the cylinder. And that is this velocity, right? v cos theta. So dx by dt would be v cos theta. So this would become 2 nm v squared cos squared theta 
times r d theta. Okay, so now we have, so this is the small force acting on the sand particles in the dv volume. Okay, so it is the force that is imparted. This small patch of uh, sand particles that are approaching this cylinder, the force that is imparted to these particles by the cylinder is the df that we just determined. Okay. So this same force will be applied on the cylinder as well by Newton's third law. And hence we just have to find this, um, the total force acting on the sand particles and we'll get the answer for the total force acting on the cylinder. So this angle we assumed it to be theta. So if I take a symmetrical element above of angle theta, the same force df would be applied on those particles as well. Now, as you can see, the vertical components of this df is getting cancelled out. So again, we have to integrate this horizontal component of df to get the total force imparted and that is df cos theta. So finally, the total force imparted on the cylinder or on all the sand particles, you could say is the integral of df cos theta. So that is basically, if I take out all the constant terms, it will be 2 nm v squared r cos cube theta d theta. So we have to integrate theta from limits limits minus pi by 2. So here it is minus pi by 2. And at this point, the limit of theta is pi by 2. So if I integrate it from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, I would get the answer as this is an even function. So integral minus a to a, an even function, I can write it as twice of integral 0 to a, the same function. So this would become 4 nm v squared r, the integral is from 0 to pi by 2. And this would become cos cube theta d theta. Okay, so now uh, how do we integrate cos cube? We'll use the trigonometric identity of cos 3 theta. And this would be equal to 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. And from here, we'll get the value of cos cube theta, 1 fourth of cos 3 theta plus 3 cos theta. So it'll become, so the integral now becomes something like this. So finally, the answer is going to be 8 by 3 nm v squared r. So that was it for this video guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below and yeah, thanks for watching.